Welcome, welcome to Saturday Morning Arcade. <clears throat> Hope everyone's had a good week. Hope everyone's enjoying their weekend. And if it's a long weekend, I hope they're enjoying it even more. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm gonna turn down Pretzel just for a second. That's our good old friend Pretzel Rock. Give me us a uh, royalty free music to listen to. All right. Thank you. I'm gonna pause you for a second. So, yeah, welcome. Um, today. They were going to pl be playing my childhood Atari 2600 library. Yes, these are the games that I owned as a child. And yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Atari 2600 was actually, oh. Hey, howdy there. I can't actually see your remote. It's a square. Thank you. Maybe I can on the Steam chat. It's still a square. Anyways, yeah. Um, 2600 was my first console. Although at the time, it, it was pretty obsolete. Um, one of my cousins had an, a Nintendo and was like, everyone loved it. Playing Super Mario Brothers was great. And yeah, I kind of wanted a console, but I was never one to ask for things that I could perceive to be really expensive or extravagant, so I asked for um, an Atari Junior instead, which was a re-release of the 2600 done within the Nintendo's library after the 7800. For whatever reason, they went back to the old number. I guess it was more popular, more well-known. Anyways, the Atari Junior could play... 7,800 games and 2,600 games. It was pretty good. And there was a special deal where... Oh. Aw. Thanks. Yeah. Anyways. um, Yeah, the Atari actually had a campaign at that time where you could get five games and a console for $40, which was a pretty good deal. Yeah, and I got that a number of games. And got a few extra games later on. But yeah, we're going to be going through my library as best as I could get Stella to play it. Um, Yeah, it's going to be emulated because I can't really get my... I haven't figured out how to Elgato my Ataris yet. And they don't appear clean right now on the TV. I think they need a bit of wire maintenance. But yeah. I'm gonna go through it. Um, also, I want to thank Shut Up Sprinkles and JKD9 for the hosts. Wonderful, wonderful streamers. Should follow them. Give them a look. Um, also, EJ Dinkelbonk, who started following me last night. Thank you. Appreciate all my followers. Um, I'm also at 26 followers, so past halfway to affiliate. Ooh, long road and yeah it's been a lot of hard work but I enjoy it and yeah let's keep on going anyways I'm gonna first game we're gonna play is uh the original Mario Brothers um yeah it was one of my better Atari games but also um this is a little dedication this game is dedicated to my grandmother who Passed last weekend after a long, lengthy illness. But yeah, which is unfortunate, but life. But anyway, this this Mario game was the only video game she was a video game she bought me, and you don't really know her, of course. But she didn't really understand video games at all; had nothing to do with them at any point. So. It was kind of special that she got me this. I think we we're going through a mall and there was just 
like a mound of Atari games for like five dollars each, like box games, because you know there was a Nintendo going on at the time. And I saw Mario Brothers, and I know my cousin had Super Mario Brothers. I figured, yeah, it should be pretty close. It'll just be like a watered down Mario Brothers. It, it, it's not. It's its own game. It's it's a lot of fun. But yeah, even when I showed him it, he's like, that's no good. Jerky cousin. Anyways, yeah, anyways. Just wanted to dedicate this first playthrough to my grandmother who got me this game. And she's she was a wonderful person. Thank you. I'm going to turn on Pretzel, so hopefully you can still hear me. Get some... Because, um... Atari games, while they are fun, they generally don't have a soundtrack beyond the odd leaps. And, yeah. So, we may need just a little help. So, yep, yeah, this is the original Mario Brothers game. I guess it gets referred to as the Mario Brothers arcade game. And... I'm playing this on a St Stella emulator. Which is, yeah. um, so there may be a little hiccups now and then. I find emulators a little quirky. It seems to work. And I'm using an Xbox controller to play an Atari game, which isn't the most the worst thing in the world because the Atari's original controller was pretty good, but it was also stiff as heck and a little unresponsive sometimes. We're gonna go. This is Mario. Look at him. You recognize him? And this is a shuffling technique. Shuffling sound. Now in Mario Brothers, you're charged with um, empty, or, um, defeating all the vermin that have, have invaded the sewers. Yes. So, also. You know, these are Atari games, so they aren't the most complicated things. Oh, we passed stage one. So, it may not be the most exciting gameplay. It may be a little repetitive, so. But, you know, back in the day, this is what your Saturday morning was. And you, you just kind of accepted it. I don't know. didn't have oh at this time you, you you could play on your Nintendo if you had one or your master system uh, when this was originally made 1982 this was like oh my god I just died in this game it can be e really easy to die multiple times if you just keep on falling on the same enemy oh this is the last enemy of the stage. You can see he's all pumped up. He's like charging at me. Like, I'm a turtle. I'm gonna stop you. I want to hang out in the sewer. Oh, it's a bonus level. I collect the, all the orbs. Oh, crap. Something's gonna happen now. Are we gonna make it? Are we gonna make it? We did it. We did it. Now, the Stella does play the games much quicker. Like, they're not super turbo speed. They're kind of like what you would expect a game to be. But they are much quicker than, like, the original 2600. And the controls are a lot more responsive. Like, it would be very easy to just sort of mit, like, jump like that. Oh, my God. Wait, this is crabby. Oh, I'm not doing great. This is Mr. Krabs. His thing is he takes two hits. Oh yes, and unlike modern Mario games, you cannot jump on your opponent until you knock him over. Oh, oh my god. You kinda, have, you kinda have to hit him from below and then run up and like kick him. As most exterminators work, that's how they work. Now, I think a limitation of the Atari is they don't want multiple enemies on the same row. I never really realized that before watching this or playing this, but 
I think that's what's going on. And those things, those glowy things are coins. The Atari doesn't really do circles. So, yeah. It's a ro oh my god. Oh no. Also, if you double hit from below, it they make some recover. You have to watch out for that. Oh, we got our our next enemy. It's a jumpy fly. Now, this thing is you can miss if you hit when it's in the air. Then it can be a tricky guy. As a kid, this was much harder. I think modern games, you know, may have raised my skills a little bit. Oh my god, it's so hoppy. And the middle thing is a power block. You know, knocks everything over. You can kill him. But being Atari, that doesn't say pow. Oh, I'm just gonna go over there. Oh, come on. No. I'm gonna get you. We did it. Things do get hairier a little later on. But this is basically the game. It's it's your typical arcade game from when it's from its time, which is I think it was 1982 or 83. It came out after Donkey Kong, of course, but around the same time as Donkey Kong Jr., where Mario was the villain. And this has been ported a few times. Um, you might recognize it as a bonus stage in Mario 3. It was also available on the NES. I think the DS, the Game Boy Advance has this as well. Of course, the Wii shops. No, no. Oh my god. They're too fast. There we go. Oh. The thing is, you can't change directions when you jump. Dude, that's a, th a fun feature. So, like, if you accidentally jump up, like, straight up, you, you can't really do much about that. Uh-oh, we're mixing things up. We got a turtle, we got a fly. Are the sewers doomed? Oh no, he's charging. And these guys, those guys are jerks. They'll land on a platform and start melting. And once they finish melting, they'll freeze a platform forever, making it flippy. Oh, we fell off. Level 10. This is the fabled level 10. Such high numbers. Oh. I think his name is Igloo or something like that. These are also the precursors to Mario enemies. Like having they have goofy names, backstories, I think. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh, he started to melt there. Oops. I think I hit the power block. One of those things, once it's gone, it doesn't come back. It might come back eventually, but if it does, it takes a while. Oh. Got ya.
I think in the arcade game, you can get multiple enemies on a row. Oh, I want both those coins. But Atari was very um streamlined system, let's let's call it that. It was released in 1977. This game was in, from 1982 or three, so like six years into its lifespan. It's pretty good for a system. I mean, the Atari Junior that I played on was from the early 90s, so it's pretty good dedication. Oh, everything's fast now. We're in hard mode. Oh, no. Oh, that was embarrassing. Starting to get hairy and being forced to the lower levels. Come on. Do it fly. Also, when those guys are melting, you can kick them. And get you? Oh, yeah. Got greedy. No, no. Come on. The flies are the most annoying enemies I find. Make it. Did it. Woo. Now, this game doesn't have any save feature, of course, because it's just a single screen game. But as a kid, I would usually get, you know, six or seven levels into it, except for one day where I was in the zone and I was doing really well in like level 20 or 30. And then I had to go out because, you know, it's the weekend and parents want you to go shopping and things like that. So 
I actually left my Atari on and turned off the TV so I'd play it when I got back. But for some reason, it it didn't keep. And when I got home, the Atari had gone turn off. It was sad. Oh my god. Oh. Damn poppy bastards. I'm gonna get you. Oh crap. Gonna get you. Nope, nope, nope. Crabs. I think some some of these enemies actually appeared in the Atari cartoons or arcade cartoons. I forget what they're called. I think there was two of them. One was with Donkey Kong Jr. Another one was with Donkey Kong. Oh. I can't... <laughs> I think I would have seen them when I was like super tiny, so... No, no. He's so angry. Uh oh. Got greedy. You know what? Just for a challenge, I'm gonna let this guy melt. Just the and also to show off what a melted floor does. Now it's blue. <laughs> now Mario does this oh Does this weird breaking? I can't do anything work more.
that yet. We'll, we'll play to level 20, and then I'm going to show you a different mode, and then we'll, we'll switch games. I think it's about, been about half an hour on it. Pretty good. I mean, it's, it's an Atari game. It's basically endless. It's more about grinding points. I imagine there's a point where it destabilizes or resets. Can't get to. Okay, so we'll finish this level up. Kind of stuck. It slid right off. Oh, I missed. Ran through my lives there. Boom. Don't see the power block being used. All right. Gonna. Good for that. Now, if you see that number, those are different uh, game modes. Even numbers are two playered. I'm not sure. There's like eight of them. I'm not sure what they do, all of them. But I do know this one has fireballs, which makes it everything a little tougher. The fireball seems to be random where it's going to here. And yeah, it just adds a little extra level to this. Oh. Like I said, I don't know what the other modes do, what's the difficulty. Um, Ataris have little switches on them for difficulty and game mode and sometimes they're more obvious than others what they do sometimes they don't do anything but yeah think of it as a, a real life option system oh. 
That's not, this isn't going well. Oh, oh, we did it. Awesome. Let's end it on that. We're going to switch our game. Oh. Okay. Just making sure it's still appearing properly. Welcome to Stella. And here are the games we're going to play today. Since we had Mario, we're going to do Donkey Kong. I don't think there's options with Donkey Kong. Oh, what did I do? Oh, that, that's the um, screensaver. You know, so your uh, monitor doesn't etch in Mario. So this is Mario's first game appearance, also known as Jumpman at this time. He's got different clothes. I feel like he's wearing like hoodie pajamas in this version. We're jumping over barrels. This is a pretty primitive Donkey Kong compared to like the arcade version. There's a mallet. You just use it for some extra points. Oh no! It ran out. Oh, yeah, this is a little primitive compared to other ports and the original game, of course. There's only two levels. I also found this much harder as a child. And there's Pauline. You might know her from Mario Odyssey. Here she is looking very yellow in her blue dress. Here's the second level, less famous than in the first one. Here's that get some water. No, I believe this is like a, a building and Mario's taking away parts of it. I think those are snakes. As a kid, I always saw them as like oil lamps, like Aladdin style. I never really questioned why Mario was having to deal with oil lamps. It, you just accept these things in games. Oh. Now you're kind of stuck on this level. And you can't walk across those spaces, of course. Those spaces will kill you, as, you know, tiny spaces will. And there we go. And, that went, and then we start all over again. The arc arcade has four levels to it. In the last one, you pull out pins to a building and Donkey Kong falls on his head. And you say Pauline and everything is wonderful. And then you kidnap Donkey Kong, and Donkey Kong Jr. rescues him, and you know, you know the lore. But this one is just two levels. I think the NES has three levels. I think most versions have three levels, not necessarily the same three levels. We'll play this for a little bit. Oh. My synth music, I think, said a word, and it kind of surprised me. Oh, clipped his leg. I know we died. Let's see if we can beat 990. I was just goofing around. Now it's serious. Get 10,000 points in Mario, or in Donkey Kong, I should say. You never know where those barrels are going to fall. Oh no! 
Oh, he followed me. Oh, no, no, no. It's gonna happen again. Oh, that was close. That was close, Mario. You don't even realize how close it was. Oh, no. You aren't scared. Mor mortality has been presented to you. You're frightened, Mario. You need to get over it. You need to be the hero the world needs. Oh, no. Alright. We're almost there. We almost brought... Beat in 10,000. There do seem to be more, more barrels. I'm not sure if I'm just imagining it. Oh. We did it. See how far we can go. Ah. Uh -huh. oh, no, he kind of got stuck. Oh my god. Look at him. He juked me. <coughs> Excuse me. That was a sneeze. I could not mute it before the sneeze happened. These guys are getting tricky on me. Thank you. Oh no! Sneaky oil. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Oh no! Wow. 14,200. We're gonna do one more game. I got cocky. Mario got scared. He's got this. Yeah, there definitely were more barrels in the second playthrough. Oh! Not a good, not a good start. Alright, let's go. Rawr. Take that, Donkey Kong. Feed it your oil cans. Oil lamps. Whatever. Oh no, you're gonna come down. No, you didn't. Whoa! Ideally, you want to trap them on that side. Come 
woman. Oh. Sneaky. This is it. This is the run. People doubted us. They said, oh no, no, no. Oh my god. He did it. Can we hit 20,000? Is it even possible? Did it? Oh, I didn't really want to do that. I'm on oil lamp. Nope. Trick me. Come on, Mario. There you go. Oh, pretty good. 2300. Even Donkey Kong's impressed. Look at him. It looks a little bit like Chewbacca. We won't hold that against him. It was a different time. We'll switch off. Real sport boxing, boxing, boxing. Oh, I can choose my boxer. Jab and Jack. Iron Fist. Macho Man. Lefty O'Leary. Let's go with Iron Fist. Cancel Netflix show. Oh, we can choose who we want to play. Uh, it's the, it's the time of Macho Man. So basically, all you do is you run up and you punch him and you punch him. Push up, punch up. Push down, punch down. Go back. Walk. It's, it, it's pretty basic boxing game, but it's pretty advanced compared to the other Terry boxing game. And it's the closest thing you get to, like, an action fighting game on the Atari. I mean, unless you have Double Dragon. Shh, don't, don't say that. I didn't, ha I don't, I didn't have it. And it was a 7800 game. It was pretty bad. I mean, the 7800 version, not the actual game. The actual game was fun. Taking a little rest. Basically, I want my yellow bar to fill up. And the points are our points you get for hitting, connecting, normal boxing points. Look at the crowd. The crowd really gets into it. They, they calm down when nothing's going on. But you, you throw a few punches, you rile them up. Yeah, this was my action game. And this is the best part. When they got knocked down, they're flat on the ground. I found that hilarious. I'm not sure how many rounds there are. This is one of those things that would be better two-playered. The computer just doesn't really understand. Unlike Rocky for Sega Master System where the computer just dominates you.
Punch, 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 punch. I am the Iron Fist. Boom. And he's down. Look how flat he is. We did it. We won. Look at our guy. He's so happy. Oh. Let's restart. Let's change. Dude, Jabbing Jack, he's the hero because he's the first person. And he's wearing Hulk Hogan colors. But go against Lefty O'Leary. He's left handed. You know what that means. It means he uses his left hand to eat and write and draw. If he draws. Maybe mousing? He probably doesn't have a mouse. I don't I don't think the opponents change difficulty although he does seem to be a little more avoiding my onslaught come on boy let's go let's go oh, I'll punch you so hard punch you in your blonde hair Oh, it knocked you down. It wasn't even filled up. I think he just like fell down. Punch, 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 punch. Boom, 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 boom. I don't get tired. I'm whatever my name is, I don't remember. Oh, they're hugging. That's a boxing hug. It's the boxer's way of saying to each other, I know we're fighting, but I care for you as a human being. Come on. This one's going, going to go to distance. That was pretty close. We might actually go to a decision. I'm thinking three rounds seems to be a length for this type of game. Oh, oh, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Avoid me. What the hell? What the hell, lefty? Oh, he's got more points. Yeah, what do you think of that? What do you think of that, Lefty? Oh, you want a hug? You want a boxer hug? Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm guessing the opponents do different things, because he's, like, avoiding me. Round three? Is there a round four? Oh, there is. I guess if it's boxing, it would go up to around 12? I don't see this game going on that long. I mean, it, it has been a few decades since I played the game, so. Excuse me if I've forgotten some things. <laughs> I basically played my Atari pretty dedi dedicatedly until I got a Game Boy and then a Super Nintendo. We did it! He's down. He's no match. Look at him flat on the ground. I'm gonna walk right over top of you. I know, I'm actually. Oh, there we go. That's the computer demoing how a game's supposed to go. Delicate ballet of fighters. We're gonna switch off. Ooh, we're gonna do another classic. I'm g gonna guarantee I'm not gonna do well. It's Qbert. Oh, I'm automatically playing. 
Basically, the purpose of this game is to light up all the bricks. The controls are a little weird, like I'm pushing side to go up. I mean, we want to avoid this guy. Oh, I like I pushed side there and I fell off the platform, which is a thing that happens. Uh oh. Come on. Oh, he, he got hurt. Come on. There we do. Decide not to use my deep hat. Oh, I hit something. The the green guy you saw earlier, he undoes bricks that you've done. The snake guy, he's just a jerk. What you want to do with him is make him oh, make him jump off the pyramid by using these little glowy platforms. But then the glowy platforms are gone. So yeah, basically this is the game. I think most keyword games have gone under this platform or this um what am I saying? Words. Oh no! Look at that! Look at that green jerk! Oh yeah! Oh crap! I got stuck. We did it! Basically I was saying most keyword games end up being fundamentally a similar game. They haven't figured out how to change it up or give him personality or whatnot. He did have a cartoon series where I remember him wearing a hat. I was hitting the green guys before they form. Oh, and now we have to hit spaces twice. Just to make things more fun. You gonna jump? Yay! And later levels, you can undo your own color, so you have to be careful. Oop. Stop being so hoppy! platforms and it's moving around you can't get me where'd you go oh, crap I hit yep and we're done So easy to die. It's the quarter munching. <laughs> like I've just lost two lives. Fun fact, Hubert is my favorite classic video game character. I just feel he's underappreciated. He's kind of cool, he's orange. He says stuff, he's got a nose. Cute guy. Oh, my God. It's very easy, especially with the original Atari controller, to like launch yourself off the pyramid. Like 
Like, you can easily do it to the sides and the top if you don't hit the right direction. Like, you can jump like that off any part of the pyramid and just instantly kill yourself. Oh, like that. That's how I, I ended my game. We'll do one more. Like I said, I know this gets repetitive and it's not the most interesting thing to watch. Kind of like this the green guy, he doesn't show up too much. Oh no, I hit the wrong one. You don't know when the ball versions of them are gonna, or where they're gonna fall. This jerk. Oh, and I, I killed myself. No, we've had we've had enough. That's Cubert. It's a cute game. Can be frustrating. Sometimes when you get in the zone, it's a lot of fun. How long are we been going? An hour. It's not too bad. We're gonna do venture. Yeah, this game I didn't never did well as a kid. Oh, give me a second. Looking up something. Sorry, I was getting an alert about something. Never mind. Okay. Come on, computer. Here we go. Anyways, this is Venture. I think, is this the game? There's like a Ready Player One secret thing in this. I don't really know the secrets of this game. I know you have to push reset to start the game. Basically, you're this little dot, which on an old tiny TV is virtually impossible to see. And you're a, a smiley face that I think is shooting arrows. And you want to kill the bad guys, take all the treasure. Oh no, oh no. Got some treasure. Oh, and you want to watch out for that guy. You can't kill him. You have to run away. Run away. Snakes. 
very hard to hit things. You get to live, Snake. Is it these things? Is there a secret in one of these? I don't know. Oh. Puzzle room. Did that. Like I said, this doesn't look too difficult, but on an old Atari, on a tiny TV, like everything moves a little slower, reacts slower. And the controls are terrible. Run away. Oh no. Green thing. Hmm. I want to get down there. Oh. I can't go back. They're all over one side. My opportunity. Don't take it. Yeah. Got all the treasure. You know what? I eat it, I think. Oh. Head away. Now this is more of a Stella thing, I as I don't know what to do to Oh. Ooh. Is it going? Yeah, this will be a quick little game. Um, because I don't quite know how to navigate Stella, and I don't know if it's performing properly. So, we'll, we'll switch off. We're gonna switch to. This is actually a pretty cool game. It's a, a Zeller's game. It was one of three games I got after my initial Atari things and after my Mario Brothers gift. Um, three Zeller's games, which at the time would be considered like knockoff games, but now they're like highly sought off, sought after. Anyway. This is a pretty good little spaceship game. Basically, you have to avoid things, shoot things, manage your energy level. Every time you shoot, you kind of use a bit of energy. Flying uses energy. Oh, and you have your shield. Oh, crap. And yeah, it can be difficult. It's a lot easier on this than the original software. Or hardware. Oh. Oh, it's pretty cool for an Atari game. Oh. I'm not doing too well because my shields are hurting. Those missiles are pain. Oh, oh, there's new energy, not new shields. Yeah, it's like a green tomato. A lot of sound effects. Pretty unique game, I think, unless it's based off of something I don't know.
Yay! I think that's second level. Everything's difficult now. Look how big that thing is. Whoa. Missiles are pain in the ass. Oh. Oh, look at that. We'll try it again. We got 16,842. You know, this was sort of the action-y game of my collection. Okay. I beat 16,000. Turning around is kind of weird. I'm fine. There we go. Oh, no. this guy. Oh, it's not even worth that much. There's a little bit of RNG, because I've gotten a lot of duty opponents. I've used up a lot of energy. I know. Oh, oh there's a green thing. Oh. Should have, should have been hit by that. Getting careless. This is much harder to do on a classic Atari controller. Uh-oh, my time's running low. Come on. Got to the second level. Beat our old score. There's missiles. Killed by anything. Spinny thing? Doesn't spin at all. It was green. We're gonna do it one more time. See if we can break 20,000. Then we'll switch off. Oh, or, well, 
Not gonna do it that way. You can move things faster. Oh, and then that. green thing. Damn you, tomato. We didn't. Oh. One more time? Yeah, still one more time. I know the fans are a little um, ear bleeding. So. Just want to get a slightly better score than that. What was that, 6,000? Oh. Or not. Energy. Whoa, got ya. Oh. No. No. <laughs> Crap. Okay, we'll, we'll switch off. Seem to get worse as I went along. Now this is the second um, Sellers game. Third one I wasn't able to find a virtual copy of. Ocean City Defenders, which is kind of like um. Missile command sort of thing. Ooh. That difficulty? Maybe. Basically, you have three turrets. And you try to shoot these alien ships before they get too close to you. Start it off. Easy enough. By pushing left or right, you activate the side turrets. turrets. And there's your ocean city below you. Got spinny things and a spaceship looking thing. Gets its habitat.
That guy, if you shoot him, he blows up and kills anything in the sky. He's also speedy. Crap. I just lost my main turret. Oh, I got it back through points. Crap. It's a little hard to aim the side turrets. And you can only fire one at a time because based on crap they're so fast leave me alone No, no, we're down to our thing. Oh, oh, we, we abandoned. Let's try it again. Let's try two. I don't know what two does. Oh, I can't use the middle for it. Let, let's, let's undo that. Let's try three. Assuming two might be a two player thing. Oh, I three. I can only use the one turret. Turret. That's weird. That's four. I don't know. Got him. Oh. Yeah, got him. Uh oh. I didn't really. I don't remember how many points was I got in the first game. Spaceships I'm blowing up.
<laughs> that was close. Yeah. Esther, hyper speed makes them blow up. They're like over doing their engines. You want to look into the canon of the story? Oh, missed you. I think they give up after a while. Maybe try like a sea assault or something. Uh-oh. There we go. This run seems to be going better. Maybe four is easier, but it seems weird that they would have more difficult more difficulty on earlier numbers, but you know, early video game logic may not be the same as current video game logic. Come on guys. Got my side to it somewhere. That was a long round. Round. side turrets oh he's speedy oh, crap all is lost we lost a thing I think oh we actually got him before he hit the turret Again, this is much easier to play on an Xbox controller. Atari controllers are, they're pretty good, but they're stiff. Oh my God. Oh no, my turret. All is lost. The colony. Oh, we got better. Hurry for points. Lasers 
in the back of the ship, so it gives you one last chance to hit him. Oh, unless they come from that side. Missed you twice. Are we gonna break a hundred thousand points? Is it even possible? Does a number that high really exist? We'll find out. Ninety-nine thousand. Holy crap! Uh oh, crap! We got we got cocky. Oh, we did it! Oh! Our high points are paying off. these points we can afford to build new turrets and spaceships or underwater things Till I died, but this game is taking a long time. Oh. Got ya. Oh. You know what? We'll go see if we can get to 150, then we'll call it a this a game. We'll move on. It, it, it's like it knew. Oh, never mind. We got enough points to rebuild everything. Everything, everything just suddenly got super speedy. Oh, I didn't get my gun back. Actually, we might might have an end to this game. M much harder to aim with these guys I say as I hit two speedy guys all right got our main turret back come on so close Oh no! There we did 150. We'll we'll end it at the end of this level if we survive. 
Oh, there we go. Oh, holy crap. There we go. 152, 703. Respectable. So we're gonna move on. I think this is the last game of the day. California Games, which has an excellent, excellent soundtrack. Oh, I enjoy it. All right, we're gonna. That's all. I won't pause you for a second. Except it's it's being all weird. There we go. This is a sort of party game of sorts. One of the earliest things. Um, there's no computer opponent. Basically, you, you're playing as sort of off brands of actual companies. You're going to have the jet ski team versus the Casio team. You, you can go back on. Sorry, Petzl. I know I upset you. So, <laughs> California Games is a part of a, a long line of sort of Olympic y games. I mean, this isn't Olympics, but you basically play a number of sporting events. And. Try to do really well. First one is Hacky Sack. You click to do things when the Hacky Sack is near you, depending on where it is, your opponent, or you do certain things. And you can push up to headbutt it, you can push down to go backwards, like turn around and do crazy back techniques. And the more things you do in a road, the more points things are worth. Like everything's worth 30 now, everything's worth 60 now. 90. Oh, and we missed it. Oh. See if we can get super high. If you do things in a repetitively, you don't really get that much of a point modifier. So this was a pretty advanced game of my Atari games. I think it came out much later. Oh. So you have four games in this one. Um, it's one of those things where on di different consoles, this is also like an NES game, and different consoles, different computers, there are different um, events, so they all play a little differently. Oh, come on, try to get some good old points. I didn't really pay attention to how much jet ski got. I think it'll tell you who's in, on top between events. Try it again. Boom. 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 Oh. That would have been good. Oh, stop that. Come on. You seem to be having head problems. Oh. Right now, Jeski's ahead. 
of Casio. But now we're on to the skateboarding event. Basically, you push up and down to gate, get speed, depending on what direction you're going at the moment. Push sideways to do a little skateboardery thing. You want to do higher. More points. If you get too high, you hit the sky and bash your head in. Build up some speed. This is also, uh, I find these these games, uh, California games, winter games, summer games, are also kind of a what the hell do I do game. Because the button and joystick um, inputs change for event, and you don't always quite know what you can do. Like I got, I can do that thing by pushing a button. I don't usually successfully do it. I don't know at what point do I let go. And yeah, you can fall. Oh, and you can, if you push the input right away, you can fall right, right off the bat. Look at that Hollywood sign. Hollywood. And wonderful Atari lettering. Right. Whoa, what'd you do, Cassio? This is Cassio's turn. I'm gonna change the world. Oops. Not gonna get anywhere doing that. There we go. Need to get some air. Oh, oh. Risking it. Going for some real air. Whoa, look at that. Can you get to the 700s? Oh, look at that. 710. Oh, bashed his head into the sky. It seems this is the time before helmets were a regular thing. He's been feeling that for a bit. Oh. Is that enough? No, jet ski is still on top. Now this is fun. This is BMX biking. So you go through an obstacle course. Try not to hit things. Otherwise, you kind of land on your butt. You can jump, you push down when you jump, you do that thing. You push up, you do like a, a 360 spinny thing, technical um, biking term. And there's always fun things to land on. You want to get points, but you also want to be speedy because as you can see you're being timed. White flags are, or blue flags are time, yellow one, or, sorry, yellow flags are time, blue flags are points. Spinny thing. You risked it by doing a double spinny thing. Oh, and biked right into a tree. Oh, but, oh.
No, I've been having trouble with the Stella. Kind of glitches out if you win this race, but let's see if we can get around it. Oh, ten, nine. Oh. And mud slows you down, of course. Darn mud. Oh, I can do that. Look at that. Oh, never mind. I got cocky. I think that's just flipping your like legs off the side. Okay. This is why I was talking about it. Kind of gets stuck in the winning music. Unfortunately, we won't be able to continue the actual competition. Oh, player. So, we're gonna skip to the fourth competition, which is surfing. Look at all this crazy blueness. So I find this is a little awkward of what you can and can't do. You want to stay away from the left side with the crazy water. want to do tricks to get a little oh oh yeah you don't want to do that it's it's a little weird to control pushing down to go downwards and to the side come on you can walk on the edge oh that's not good You kind of want to do that, where you jump up. Oh, he died. Do a jump and then wind back into the proper ocean. It's a little, I don't know. I played it this one the least. I mean, it's also the fourth one, so you know it did didn't get as much playthrough. Whoa! Look at that. Oh. I'm just... I'm gonna see if I can do a crazy move. Get a little further down. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> that didn't look exciting at all. I know you can walk on the oh no if you walk on the edge while you go over you get a little point bonus look at that it's like wow you did that doesn't seem that exciting oh you can try to flip your skate or surfboard that doesn't do anything Oh, I get extra points for going in the bad water and surviving. Oh, got too close. Oh, I was able to surf through the bad water. Anyways, yeah, that's, uh, California Games. It can be a lot of fun. It's, you can have, like, up to, like, eight people. So that's pretty exciting. We did one last game. It wasn't in my original library. I do apologize. Just gonna be honest with that. I do own it now. And it was one of my favorite arcade games. 
mostly because it's it's about ostriches riding ostriches with lances yeah we're playing joust oh I think I just killed myself the point of joust is to hit your opponent slightly higher than they hit you and then take away their egg so they don't respawn which that makes sense right it's a little hard to control Especially on the Atari yay made it to level two uh, oh oh my god that red stuff is lava right now it's covered up by a floor but that won't always be the case On the NES, they, um, Bloom Fighter is kind of a, a version of Joust. I don't know which came first. I'm assuming Joust did. But yeah, you're, you're a little guy on an ostrich fighting other people on ostriches, jousting them, as the name is. And yet, yeah, those eggs, if left alone, they'll respawn the opponents. You have to get rid of them. Oh. Knee smack me. I don't know if gray means anything. Maybe he attacks differently. If you hit people at the same level, you just kind of bounce off of each other. Which is kind of fun. I need an egg. Yay! Look at that. Oh, egg level. I get need to get these before they become bad guys. Oh, too late. It's kind. Of, this is kind of like a bonus area, bonus level. Run, run, run. Where are you going? Stuck down there. Nope. Got ya. It's weird that between levels you don't reset. You're just wherever you are. Oh, that's a unbeatable opponent. You don't want to mess with it. Oh. Think about the fireball and Mario Brothers. Come on. Oh. Eighteen hundred joust. We'll try it again. And then we'll, I'll probably call it a stream. As it's been almost two hours. And I played all, well, most of my library that I could get. Oh my gosh. Ostriches, evil ostriches. Opponents never seem to land. Oh, got ya. I guess it was eighteen thousand, not eighteen hundred.
Got you with my butt. Butt attack. Never underestimate an ostrich's butt. Oh. Not doing so good now. Oh my gosh, you bastard. As he comes after a certain amount of time. I know, I'm taking too much time. This isn't a playthrough that's gonna change the world. So close. Fourteen thousand. Look at me. Bum, bum, bum. That's the same level I got to before. Where you bounce off the ceiling too, so oh no! Ooh, double egg. No. Oh my God! There's two of them. I need to get that egg. Hurry! Ah, oh. poopies. All right. You know what? Yeah, that's gonna call it today. Thank you all for joining up. Um, any VOD watchers in the future? Thank you. Any lurkers? You're always appreciated. Yeah. So that was my Atari 2600 collection, mostly. Um, yeah, hope it was entertaining. Oh, didn't want, didn't want to turn you down a little bit. And thank you, Pretzel, for giving us some background music for the games that predated background music. Um, yeah. So, I'm planning, let's see, look at future streams. Planning on continuing my Child of Light playthrough next week. As well as I have some other ideas planned. You know, stay tuned. Um, next weekend will be Strategy Sunday. Um, we finished XCOM Enemy Unknown. So we'll try a new game. Um, debating whether to just do a one-off game for a day. And then switch it off to a longer game. Um, we'll find out. Um, next... Saturday morning arcade. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I've been hankering uh, playing Link's Awakening. I kind of want to play that before the re-release comes out, and then everyone's playing it. But oh, well, we'll see. Anyways, thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll talk to you later. All right, bye bye.